Okay, final thoughts, time for the Phantom of the Opera. For folks who did not watch the extended, uh, sorry for that very, very short intro. Um, but you know, hey, that's the way it can go. Um, this game is, is definitely mentally challenging. It's one of the great things about it. It's a very wonderful, fun cat and mouse um, duel between two players, and um, you know every every choice you make is hugely important. You really have to think about everything, and you have to think about you know not just what am I trying to accomplish, but what am I leaving for my opponent? What will they be able to do with the cards that I don't take? And clearly, that's why I lost so fast because I didn't give that a second thought. If I had thought about it for even just like 30 seconds, I would have realized, oh my God, look what I'm about to do. I should do this other thing instead because then I could have at least um, in that first round have eliminated two suspects, and then I might have had a fighting chance. But as it was, I never was going to be able to come back from that. Oh my gosh. But, you know, and then, you know, I mean, for some people that might be a problem because this game is, is so, so interesting and so different. It really requires you to think through stuff. But what's really nice about this game is it comes, and I demonstrated this in the extended play, it, it, this is actually one of the reasons I like this game, or Jen, I like this game so much more than Mr. Jack. There's several reasons. I'll go through them all. Why this game is a Mr. Jack killer for us. First one, it has a built-in handicap system. Uh, because this game can be very, very daunting for newbies. So much to think about, so easy to make a mistake, as I demonstrated. Um, the game comes with a built-in handicap. You remember at the beginning, when the game first started, oopsie, uh, the opera lady was right here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, there we go. Right here in the middle of her fear track. But if you're playing, if an experienced player is playing with a novice, you can adjust where she starts. You have quite a bit of flexibility. And so if, an, if the investigator is a novice, you can move her up to three points to the right. And that will give the investigators a, a much bigger chance, like three more opportunities. On the flip side, if the, um, if the phantom is the novice, you can move to the left, and that means the phantom can uh, scare her away that much faster. So this is a brilliant, very simple, very easy to use, and very intuitive um, little handicap thing that works great. Absolutely love it, so brilliant, and so necessary for a game like this, because you know an experienced player will always wipe the floor and um, you know with, with a novice. So having that means everybody can have a good time in this very fast playing 30 minute game. So that's awesome. That's one of the things we really, really love. But you know, overall, I think the main reason we enjoy this so much more than Mr. Jack, and by the way, I mean, I don't mean to cast version on Mr. Jack. Mr. Jack's a neat, neat game as well. But um, Mr. Jack, well, um, Phantom of the Opera, as Mr. Jack 3, is basically a very, I'm not, I was about to say, not simplified, but streamlined version of Mr. Jack. Um, Mr. Jack, it has the same basic thing. In fact, it even has the same eight characters with broad, with kind of the same basic powers. They're, they're a bit different, but they kind of work the same. But Mr. Jack is on a hex map where characters don't just move very simply from room to room. They move, um, you know, one, two, three hexes. And, you know, so right off the bat, there's a lot more complexity because some characters can move three hexes. Some characters can move four hexes. One character can move six hexes, but they can't move through manholes, which are teleporters, which other players can use. So the big thing is Mr. Jack has a lot more complexity in the logistics. I mean, because you're spending a lot more time, you know, trying to remember, okay, who can move? Okay, oh, they can move three. And, um, you know, when, the, when the, the equivalent of a singer lady moves, that can move other people up to three spaces towards her. And you, so you got to figure out all this stuff. There's just a lot more logistical um, minutia in how everything works. This game has streamlined it and just made it really smooth and simple. Hey, how far can they move? Well, it's how, if there's three people in the room, they can move three other rooms. It's just that simple. Um, it, you know, and, and I, I just think it's brilliant. It's, um, we find it, we find we can spend more time thinking about the overall strategy of where we want to maneuver people and less about thinking about, right, how many spaces could I move? And we find that a more pleasurable experience. So that's a big advantage that Phantom has over Jack. Next one. Well, I already talked about the what do you call it, the, the handicap. That's a big, big deal. Next one, Mr. Jack, in its default mode, or you know, in, in its shipping mode, always starts out the exact same way. Every single suspect is on the exact same place of the board. The game always starts off in the exact same situation. And honestly, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how chess starts out. Sure, that's fine. Jen and I prefer a game, we always prefer a game, where there's some random variability to the setup. And this game, the setup is brilliant. You just take the characters and you just randomly put each one in a room. And that's it. 
And the game is balanced and designed so you can have a good solid game that way. Mr. Jack, you can't do that. Mr. Jack, you have to put everybody in the right place so everything is nice and balanced starting out. Now, ultimately, there was a variant that was de developed by the, by the designers, I believe, for Mr. Jack that would allow you to have a random setup, but it was a complicated one and it wasn't nice and smooth and simple like this one is, and, um, or elegant, I should say. And so we definitely think this is a big improvement over Mr. Jack, the random variable setup. Now, some people, they don't care about that. Um, we think it's an improvement because of the the streamlined gameplay. We think it's improved because there's a handicap. I certainly need it in this game because, oh my gosh, I just got my ass kicked by myself. And um, the last thing that we really appreciate more, now this is really for Jen, I don't really mind. We actually got Mr. Jack quite a while ago. We thought it was a really clever game. Really liked it a lot, but we traded it away almost instantly because Jen found it abhorrent. I mean, it literally turned her stomach to have a cute, um, funny, silly, cartoony game that was all about helping Jack the Ripper get away with murder. Because it, Mr. Jack in, it is Jack the Ripper. And you know, he is a serial murderer who preyed on prostitutes. And this was a real story and it caused a lot of hardship and pain and misery. And Jen, just, it just, oh, she, she, it, she, it, she found it unacceptable that um, to, to, to make that you know, the subject matter for a lighthearted, fun little game. Now, for, by the same reason, I doubt we will ever get a chance to play Letters from Whitechapel, because again, that's a game where you are actively helping Jack the Ripper escape from the, from the London police. So Jen just, the theme immediately turned her off, and that's where this comes in. You know, it's not based on anything, it, well, it, and it's not even the real Phantom of the Opera, which you know, some people, I guess, argue that, you know, the Phantom of the Opera is loosely based on some real people and stuff like that, but this is not, this is a Scooby-Doo mystery. This is, um, hey, the investigators have shown up, and there's somebody running around with a rubber mask, you know, trying to scare people, and they've only got a certain amount of time before the episode is over to figure out who it is. It's so brilliant, and you know, it's completely inoffensive, it's actually really quite fun and um, silly, and we like it so much, so much more. So the, it wins on theme, it wins on elegance, because you get rid of all the other complexities, the manholes, the barricades, there's so much stuff going on, and we, so we can just focus on streamlined how to manipulate the people. We don't have to manipulate the board, we manipulate the people. And um, you know the handicap, just overall makes this a much, much better game. Now, I could, I can imagine there are probably plenty of people, out, obviously a lot of people, heck, maybe most people aren't really bothered by the theme of Mr. Jack. Fair enough, you know. For Jen, too soon. For other people, maybe not. So maybe that's not a big issue. And for a lot of people, I can imagine they prefer Mr. Jack, both, one, because of the chess-like, hey, it's always the same every time. And part two, hey, yeah, there's no handicaps. This is a game that's all about a battle of wits. If my wits are better than yours, I should win. No handicaps. And three, um, I like the complexity. I like, I mean, because um, um, the whole crux, this game has the timer that's counting down, right? Mr. Jack, it, there's no timer. Instead, Basically, what's happening is the Mr. Jack player is trying to get the, the, the Jack the Ripper to leave the board. There's exits off of the board. And, you know, they have to maneuver and try to get that person off the board. And, I mean, instead of just play a stalling game, which is what you do when you're, when you're the Phantom in this game. And that does create a much co more complex, it's, it's much harder to be the Phantom or I'm sorry, Jack the Ripper, I mean, because there's so much more going on. There's the blockade that's moving. I mean, you have to try and move them towards the exit without being too terribly, it's, it's a much, I mean, it is probably a deeper game. This is probably a bit simplified. I, I, you know, I started to say it wasn't, but it is. The timer um, makes it a simpler game to play as the Phantom. But honestly, for us, that's a good thing because um, you know there's enough head scratchiness and enough like oh brain burneriness in this game. Um, in Mr. Jack, it was it, it was it was just too cumbersome and burdensome, um, and so we like it this way. But I bet a lot of people would think, hey, you've made Mr. Jack a little bit too easy. We want that depth. We want that complexity. We want that more chess-like scenario. So for some people, I totally understand why Jack still beats Phantom. But for us, it's Phantom all the way. If we still had Jack, it would be gone, replaced with Phantom of the Opera, because we enjoy it so much more. And there you go, folks. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Any mistakes, please let me know. I probably made a few. I probably uh, forgot to activate a power here or there or whatever. But still, hopefully you have a pretty good idea of how it plays, and you can decide for yourself whether it's a game for you. And um, on that, I think I will... Uh I bid you adieu. Have a nice day. The fat lady has now sung. Bye-bye.